outlook in the philosophy of the Lankavatara. 2. This is the reading of Tianj. 637. To abandon both name and sense, this is the way of all the Buddhas. 1. Those who wish to get enlightened in any other way will not attain enlightenment for themselves, nor for others. 638. 639. When the world is seen detached from knowledge and knowability, there is no meaning to it, and discrimination ceases to go forth. 640. By seeing into the nature of mind, there is the cessation of discrimination as regards works and words. By not seeing into the true nature of self-mind, discrimination evolves. 641. Four of the skandhas are formless, they cannot be numbered. The elements differ from one another, how can they produce such pluralities of forms? 642. When the notion of individuality is abandoned, we have no elements, primary and secondary. If we say that form is produced by other qualities, why not by the skandhas? 2. 643. When one is emancipated from the ayatanas and skandhas, seeing them as free of individual signs, then the mind is liberated because of seeing the egolessness of things. 644. From the differentiation of an objective world and the senses, the vijnana is set in motion in eight ways. Thus, the aspects of self-nature three are three but when imagelessness obtains they all cease. 645. When dualism is cherished, the alaya sets up in the manas the consciousness of an ego and its belongings, and the vijnanas. When this is penetratingly perceived, they all subside. 646. When the immovable is seen, oneness and otherness being discarded, then there will be no more discriminating of the two, ego and its belongings. One read after Tianj. The Sanskrit text is too obscure for intelligent reading. Two not clear. Three that is, Svavavalakshana. 647. Nothing evolving, there is no growth, nor is there any cause to set the Vijnanas in action. Work and cause being removed, there is cessation and nothing is aroused. 648. Pray tell me the why of discrimination, of mind only, and of the world. Why is the world said to be disjoined from causes, discarding qualified and qualifying? 649. The mind is seen as manifold when visible forms are discriminated. As it is not clearly perceived that what is seen is of the mind, there is something other than the mind, because the dualism of a mind and an external world is clung to. 650. When the world is not understood with intelligence there is nihilism. But the mind being asserted, how is it that this does not give rise to realism? 651. Discrimination is neither existent nor non-existent. Therefore, realism does not arise. As it is clearly understood that what is seen is of mind, only, no discrimination is set to work. 652. Discrimination not rising, there is a turning back, and there is no dependence on anything. When things are regarded as subject to causation, the fourfold proposition obstructs the way of truth. 653. Different expressions are distinguished, but none is verifiable. In all these there is a necessary implication which rises from the notion of a primary causal agency. Point 1. 654. By maintaining the combination of causes and conditions, a primary causal agency is warded off. When a chain of causes is held to be impermanent, the fault of permanency is avoided. 655. There is neither birth nor destruction where the ignorant see impermanency. Nothing is ever destroyed, 
What is seen as real is due to the idea of a causal agency. 2. How is the unseen born? By what does the impermanent world come into existence? 656. 1. Not quite clear. 2. In the Sanskrit text this line is made to belong to the next verse, which is wrong. 657 to 662. 663. The gods, the asuras, mankind, the animals, hungry ghosts, and yamas abode. These six paths of existence are enumerated, where sentient beings are born. 664. According to one's karma, be it superior, inferior, or middling, one is born in these six paths. Guarding all that is good, one will attain an excellent emancipation. 665. The company of the bhikshus is taught by you that there is birth and death at every moment. Pray tell me its meaning. 666. As one form changes into another, so is the mind born and broken up. Thence I tell my disciples how uninterruptedly and momentarily birth and death takes place. 667. In like manner discrimination also rises and disappears with every single form. Where there is discrimination, there are living beings. Outside of it there are no living beings. 668. At every moment there is a disjunction, this is called causation. When one is liberated from the notion of form, there is neither birth nor death. 669. When dualism is upheld, there rise causation born and no causation born, ignorance and suchness, etc. Semicolon. Not to be dualistic is suchness. 670. When causation born and no causation born are distinguished, things are differentiated, there are permanency, etc. There are effect, cause, and causation. 671. As long as the notion of cause and effect is upheld, there is no difference between the philosophers. This is your teaching as well as that of other Buddhas. O Mahamuni, such are not the wise ones. 672. Within the body, measuring one vyana, one there is a world. The cause of its rising, the attaining of cessation, and the path. This I teach to sons of the victor. 673. By clinging to the three svabhavas, perceived or grasped and perceiving or grasping are manifested. The simple-minded discriminate objects as belonging to the world and to the super-world. 1. The measure of two extended arms. 674. From the viewpoint of relativity, the notion of svabhava has been upheld, but in order to ward off one-sided views the svabhava is not to be discriminated. 675. As faults and defects are sought, the principle is not established, nor is the mind properly set to work. This is due to the rising of dualistic notions. Non-duality is suchness. 676. If one should think that the vijnana, etc., are originated by ignorance, desire, and karma, this is wrong, for the fault of non-finality is committed. This being committed, the rise of the world becomes impossible. 677. The fourfold destruction of things is told by the unenlightened. Discrimination is said to rise in two ways. In fact, there is no existence, no non-existence. When one is released from the fourfold proposition, one abandons dualism. 678. Discrimination may rise in two ways, but when it is seen in its true nature, it will never rise again. For in all things not being born there is the awakening of intelligence. But one where there is the birth of things, this is owing to discrimination. 
Let one not discriminate. 679.2 Pray tell me, O Lord, about the truth in order to check dualistic views, so that I and others may not cherish the dualism of being and non-being. 680. And thus we may keep ourselves away from the philosopher's teachings, and also from the sravakas and prataika buddhas. For it behoves the bodhisattvas not to lose the life of enlightenment as realized by the Buddhas. 681. To be delivered from the notion of cause and no cause. Not to be born, and being one. These are synonyms. The ignorant are bewildered by them. But the wise always rise above them. One that which follows forms the first half of verse 678 in the Sanskrit text. To the verse 679 here is composed of the second half of 679 and the first line of 680 in the Sanskrit text. 682. All things appear like a cloud, a multitude of clouds, a rainbow. They are like a vision, a hairnet, maya, etc. They are born of self-discrimination. And yet the philosophers discriminate the world as born of a self-creating agency. 683. Not being born, suchness, reality, limit, and emptiness. These are other names for form. One should not imagine it to mean a nothing. 684. In the world another name of Asta is Kara. Indra is also called Sakra and Purandara. In the same way there are many synonyms for this existence. And one should not imagine it to mean a nothing. 685. Emptiness is no other than form. So is no birth. One should not imagine anything different from this. If one does, faulty views will follow. 686. Because of objective appearances being asserted, there is general discrimination and particular discrimination. Because of imagination, there are long and short, square and round, etc. 687. General discrimination belongs to the cheetah, imagination to the manas, and particular discrimination to the manovijnana. But reality is neither the qualified nor the qualifying. 688. What is regarded by the philosophers as unborn is my own teaching wrongly viewed. And the latter is imagined to be indistinguishable from theirs. But this is submitting a faulty argument. 689. Those who have acquired the knowledge of proper reasoning by making use of the idea of no birth and its meaning, are said to have an understanding of my doctrine. 690. In order to crush the philosophical views, not being born is said to mean not having any abode. Knowing what dualism means, I teach the doctrine of no birth. 691. Are all things to be regarded as unborn, or not? Pray tell, O Mahamuni. The doctrine of causelessness, no birth, the rising of existence. All these are held by the philosophers. 692.1 I teach mind, only which is removed from the dualism of being and non-being. One should discard the view of birth and no birth which causes various philosophical theories. 1 The first half of this verse numbered 692 in the Sanskrit text is evidently inserted here by mistake, and is not translated. And the first half of the following verse is brought over here to complete 691. The numbering, therefore, from 692 to 694 is altered in this translation. 693. In the doctrine of causelessness, of no birth, of birth, the notion of a causal agency is involved on which they depend. Effortless deeds come from nothingness, and deeds as ordinarily performed are mixed with motives. 694. 
tell me the right view that goes with skillful means, original vows, etc. Semicolon. How does the society of the holy ones come into existence when all things are not? 695. By separating oneself from the dualism of perceived and perceiving, there is neither evolution nor cessation. The mind is born as views are cherished as regards one existence or another. 696. Things are said to be unborn. How is this? Pray tell me. Sentient beings do not understand it, so it ought to be explained. 697. Pray explain to me, O Mahamuni, all the contradictions involved in the statements made before and after, to escape the errors of the philosophers and to be released from the perverted theory of causation. 698. Pray tell me, O most excellent of teachers, regarding cessation and coming back into existence, in order to be released from being and non-being and yet not to destroy cause and effect. 699. Pray tell me as to the graded succession of the stages, O lotus-eyed one. One for the world cherishes dualism and is bewildered with wrong views. 700. For on account of the wrong views concerning birth, no birth, etc. The cause of serenity is not recognized. There is no society of the holy ones for me, and I have no chance to discourse on the nature of being. 701. There is error where dualism is maintained, but the Buddhas are thoroughly free from dualism. All things are empty, momentary, have no self-nature, and have never been born. 1 Padma Ikshana. According to Tianj. 702. Discriminations are carried on by those who are enveloped by evil theories and doctrines, but not by the Tathagatas. Pray tell me about the rise and cessation of discrimination. 703. Accumulated by false reasonings, there is a combination of varieties of appearances and vijnanas, whereby each vijnana takes in an objective field according to its class. 704. Recognizing external forms, discrimination is set in motion. As this is understood, and the meaning of reality is seen as it is, the mind conforms itself to the nature of the wise and is no more set in motion. 705. The elements being rejected, there is no birth of things, but as the elements as appearances are always the mind, one understands what is meant by no birth. 706. Do not discriminate discrimination, the wise are those who are free from discrimination. When discrimination is carried on, there is dualism which does not lead to nirvana. 707. By the statement of no birth, Maya is seen and destroyed. When Maya is made to be born of no causation, this injures the truth of the statement. 708. The mind is to be regarded as a reflected image originating in the beginningless past. It is something of reality but not reality itself. One should realize it truly as it is in itself. 709. The nature of birth or existence is like an image appearing in a mirror, which, while it is devoid of oneness and otherness, is not altogether non-existent. 710. Like the Gandhava's city, Maya, etc., which appear depending upon causes and conditions, the birth of all things is not no birth in a relative sense. 711. It is on account of general usage that a dualistic discrimination is set up as regards persons and things. But this is not clearly understood by the ignorant so that the thought of an ego soul and individual objects is cherished. 712. There are five classes of sravakas. The sravakas that is. Hearers generally. Those who are attached to the doctrine of causation. Those who are arhats. 
those who are dependent upon their own power, and those who are dependent upon the power of the Buddha. 713. Time interruption, destruction, the highest reality, and mutuality. These four are imagined as involved in the idea of impermanency by the ignorant, who are not endowed with intelligence. 714. The ignorant addicted to dualism cherish such thoughts as dualities. Atoms, original matter, and primary cause, and fail to understand the means of emancipation, because they adhere to the alternatives of being and non-being. 715. 716. The primary elements are of different qualities, and how can they produce one this world of matter? Each of the elements has its own seat. What are regarded as secondary elements are not made by them. 717. Fire burns matter, the nature of water is to wet, the wind scatters matter. How can matter be produced by the elements when they are of such contradicting natures? 718. The Rupa Skanda and the Vijnana. There are these two Skandas and not five. They are different names for the Skandas. Of this I have talked in a hundred ways. 719. By the separation of mind from what belongs to it, the present world evolves. Various forms of matter are inseparably conjoined with one another. Matter is mind-made, 